welcome friends in the previous lecture we have learnt about different types of die casting process we have seen that die casting process is broadly classified into two types one is the gravity die casting and another one is the pressure die casting in the gravity die casting there will be two metallic dies will be there and the molten metal molten metal enters into these dies by virtue of gravity whereas in the case of the pressure die casting again there will be two metallic dies will be there and the molten metal enters into the metallic dies because we apply some external pressure so that is the uh, primary difference between the gravity die casting and the pressure die casting again the pressure die casting is uh, classified into two types one is the cold chamber pressure die casting and another one is the hot chamber pressure die casting in the case of the cold chamber pressure die casting the furnace where we melt the metal is away from the die casting machine it is not the part of the machine whereas in the case of the hot chamber pressure die casting machine the furnace where we melt the metal is a part of the machine it's an integral part of the die casting machine so that is the difference between the cold chamber pressure die casting machine and also the hot chamber pressure die casting process now in this lecture we will see the recent advancements in the die casting process so one of the recent advancements in the die casting process is the semi solid metal casting process what is this semi solid metal casting process metal shaping processes at right various temperature we will see first if we see the liquid casting shaping is carried out above the liquidous temperature no doubt if we are making a casting we melt the metal above the melting point or above the liquidous temperature then we pour the molten metal into the mold cavity so that is the liquid casting again so there is another metal shaping process that is the forging rolling extrusion so all these constitute the forming process so here how we get the required shape we get the required shape below the solidus temperature now here we can see the difference between the what's a semi solid metal casting and the other process here shaping is carried out between solidus and liquidus temperatures we want heat the metal above the liquidus temperature we want cool down the what's a metal below the solidus temperature this shaping is carried out between the solidus and liquidus temperatures so that is the special about semi solid metal casting process or semi solid what's a forging and here we can see the liquid casting and here in this what's a, this is the phase diagram of aluminum and silicon and here we can see this is the liquidus temperature and this is the solidus temperature and here we can see this is the mixture of liquid and solid now if it is the liquid casting the casting is carried out above the liquidus temperature so this is the liquidus temperature now let us see the forging rolling and extrusion this forming process now i have already told so this is the liquidus temperature now this is the solidus temperature now here the forging and these and other forming process are carried out below the solidus temperature so that is about the forging and other forming process now let us see the semi solid casting now the most interesting feature of the semi solid casting is that the shaping is carried out between liquidus temperature and the solidus temperature this is the liquidus temperature and this is the solidus temperature now what are the features of semi solid metal casting semi solid metal casting is a near net shape variant of the die casting process semi solid metal casting is done at a temperature that puts the metal between its liquidus and solidus temperatures ideally the metal should be 30 to 65% solid means it is not totally solid it is not totally liquid the process combines the advantage of casting and forging the process of casting advantage of casting is that we get the required shape very easily because we melt the metal and we pour it into a what's a mold so getting the shape required shape is very easy in the case of the casting but the mechanical properties may not be very good 
besides this there will be other problems like shrinkage cavities and so on. Now, in the case of the forging applying the pressure or what is a causing deformation to the raw component is very difficult because extensive pressure is required, but we get very good properties. Now, we are mixing these two, we are taking the advantage of casting and we are also taking the advantage of forging. So, the process combines the advantages of casting and forging. The process is used with non-ferrous metals such as aluminum, copper and magnesium. So, so this is all about the semi-solid metal casting. So, the what is a deformation is carried out between the liquidus temperature and the solidus temperature and we get the advantages of casting and also the forging. We get better mechanical properties and this kind of shrinkage what is a defects are not likely to arise in the case of the semi-solid metal casting process. Now, what are the types of semi-solid metal casting process? One is the Tixo casting, another one is the Rio casting, another one is the Tixo molding and finally, the Sima process. Now, we will see all these one by one. First, we will see the Tixo casting process. What is this Tixo casting? Tixo casting utilizes a pre-cast billet. We have to buy this billet in the market and it is pre-cast under certain what say controlled conditions under certain controlled environment. The billet has a non-dendritic microstructure. You see this? This is very important. It has a non-dendritic microstructure that is normally produced by vigorously stirring the melt as the bar is being cast. As we are getting this bar, right? it is, it is rigorously stirred. Now, we buy this billet and we bring it and we have to cut it into pieces or to the required what is a quantity we have to cut. Then induction heating is normally used to reheat the billets to the semi solid temperature range. Now, after cutting these billets, we have to heat it to the semi solid temperature range means above the solidus temperature, but below the liquidus temperature. To a such an extent, we have to reheat this billet. Now, we have to put these billets into the cold chamber machines uh, die. There will be two what is a dice will be there set of dice. We have to put these what is a reheated billets between these two dice. Now, cold chamber die casting machine applies external pressure on these dice and this will, it will be what is a formed, it will be deformed. Cold chamber die casting machines are used to inject the semi solid material into the hardened, hardened steel dice. Now, once we apply pressure on the dice, so it will be squeezed between the, these two dice and it the what is a, a preheated and reheated billet will be taking the shape of the cavity between the two dice. Now, this is what we can see diagrammatically. So, these are the uh, so what is a special billets, precast billets. So, these are available in the market which are manufactured without under certain what is a special conditions. It has got the non-dendritic microstructure. Now, we will be cutting this saw to the required length and also to the required quantity we will cut them. Next one we will put these what say cut pieces into a furnace that means we are reheating them. We will reheat them above the solidus temperature, but below the liquidus temperature. Now, these what say reheated slugs are being transferred into the cold chamber die casting machine. We can see here. So, these are the dies. So, this will be kept inside these two dies. Now, pressure will be applied between these two dies and this uh, what is a slug which is reheated will be squeezed between the two dies and the slug will be taking the shape of the cavity which is available between the two dies. Now, sometimes uh, some scrap will be there. This scrap cannot be reused. We have to sell out that scrap. Now, these are the advantages of Tixo casting. Tixo casting has the ability to produce extremely high quality components due to the product consistency. So, this is the advantage of Tixo casting. Now, it has got the disadvantages and drawbacks as well. What are they? This process is expensive due to the special billets that must be used, right. So, these billets are what say manufactured under special environment 
and uh, so that uh, sp some special what say properties are induced. So, these we have to buy from the market that is how the process becomes expensive. Only a limited number of alloys can be sketched using this method. Now, as I have already told scrap sometimes we get the scrap, this scrap cannot be used directly again we have to sell again those people will make the what say precast billet under special conditions again they will sell it. So, that way scrap cannot be directly used. So, we have completed the Tixo casting, next we will see the Rio casting. What is this Rio casting? Rio casting involves preparation of a semi solid what say manufacturing slurry directly from the liquid alloy. The alloy is cooled into a semi solid state with the desired solid fraction and then is introduced into a dye with no any intermediate solidification steps. Semi solid slurry with non dendritic, non dendritic solid particles is produced from a fully liquid regular alloy. So, here we are not buying a what is a precast billet from outside, here we are making a slurry, so that the com component will have the required properties. The semi solid slurry with non dendritic solid particles, here again here we are getting the non dendritic uh, what say solid particles. So, when once this uh, casting has the non dendritic uh, what is a structure, the properties will be good. So, such a uh, what is a uh, what is a component is produced from a fully liquid regular alloy and here we can see this diagrammatically, first we have to buy the ingot. So, this ingot is not expensive as expensive as the uh, billet which we buy in the previous process. Now, this we put it inside the what is a furnace you can see here, now you see here and in this uh, what is a we are what is a stirring, finally it will be transferred to the die casting machine, cold chamber die casting machine. There external pressure will be applied uh, between these two dies and the slurry will be injected into the cavity which is available between the two dies. Sometimes we get the scrap, is yes, no need to what say uh, what say discard that scrap, again that scrap can be put inside the what say furnace, again from that scrap we can get the slurry. So, that is the Rio casting. Now, what are the advantages of Rio casting process? No need to by the precast billets as in the case of the Tixo casting. So, because we are buying the precast billets in the Tixo casting process, the process becomes expensive. So, such things such thing would not arise here in the case of the Rio casting. Scrap can be reused immediately, immediately if there is any scrap again it can be what is kept inside the furnace and we can get the required slurry. Now, what are the drawbacks of Rio casting? Obtaining the correct solid fraction is difficult. We have to control the temperature between the liquidus temperature and the solidus temperature. We have to get the required solid fraction. So, that requires a skill. So, skilled workers are required. Next one, Tixo molding. What is this Tixo molding? Tixo molding is used for magnesium alloys. This can be used only for magnesium alloys. It uses a machine similar to injection molding. Generally, this injection molding is used for producing plastic uh, components. So, a similar machine is used for Tixo molding. Now, what we, what is done inside this uh, what is a uh, machine, injection molding machine? Magnesium alloy chips, initially we have to make magnesium alloy chips. So, these chips are fed into the back end of heated barrel at room temperature. Now, this barrel is maintained under uh, argon atmosphere to prevent oxidation because magnesium readily what say uh, reacts with oxygen. So, we have to prevent that for that purpose we use the argon atmosphere. Now, we are uh, what say feeding these magnesium alloy chips to the back end of the heated barrel inside the injection molding machine. Now, there will be a screw in that. So, as this screw it rotates what happens it provides necessary shearing force to generate globular structure needed for semi solid casting. So, there will be a screw as the screw is rotating these chips will be trapped inside the screw and they undergo shearing because of that we get the globular structure for the semi solid casting. Once enough slurry has developed the screw moves forward to inject the slurry into the steel die 
and here we can see diagrammatically. So, this is the what is a, uh, a machine which is what is a very much uh, what is a close to the injection molding machine which is used in the plastic uh, manufacture of the plastic components and what is this machine? It has a barrel you see this is a barrel outside barrel. Now, inside there is a screw it rotates and this is connected to a motor you see here, here it is connected to a motor and here there is a feeding hopper. So, there is a hopper will be there to feed the what is a magnesium alloy chips here we feed the magnesium alloy chips. Now, you see here there is a argon atmosphere. So, so that there would not be any oxidation of the magnesium alloy. Now, this there is a heating what is a system for this barrel this will be heated up. Now, here we can see these are the two dies this is one die and this is one die. Now, the screw will be rotating as the motor is rotating the screw will be rotating. Now, we what is a feed the what is a magnesium alloy chips into this hopper and they will be going inside the barrel as the screw is rotating the what is a chips undergo shearing and finally, a slurry is formed and because it is heated you see it will be heated between 560 to 630 degrees centigrade. As the screw further rotates what will happen the slurry will be injected between the two dies there it solidifies. Once the slurry solidifies the dies will be withdrawn and the component will be taken out. Again the dies will be closed again the uh, what is a screw rotates the slurry will be injected into the two dies. So, this is the simple principle of thixo molding. Next one SIMA process what is this SIMA process? In SIMA process the cast alloy is first hot work and then cold work to the desired degree of deformation you see first it is hot work means above the recrystallization temperature then it is cold work means deformation under the below the recrystallization temperature then the material is then heated between the solidus and liquidus temperatures after isothermal holding for about 15 to 20 minutes the semi solid slurry is cast or it injected between the two dies. So, this is the what is a basic principle of the SIMA process. Now, what is the scientific understanding? High angle grain boundaries induced by plastic deformation and recrystallization will be wetted by liquid metal at the semi solid temperature resulting a fine and globular structure. So, this is the scientific understanding this is the scientific principle behind the SIMA process. This method is limited in size to bar diameter smaller than 37 millimeters because of this only smaller parts can be cast. So, that is the limitation of this process only smaller uh, components can be cast. Now, here we can see this process diagrammatically. Now, this is the liquidus temperature and this is the solidus temperature and this is the recrystallization temperature and this is the room temperature. Now, you see here initially it is in the molten state. Now, then it what is happening? It is what say uh, deformation is taking place right. So, here it is between the liquidus temperature and solidus temperature and below the solidus temperature also there is a deformation. After that what is happening? Deformation extrude and quench between the room temperature and the solidus temperature. It is a, what say extruded and it is quenched. So, this what is a process will be repeated finally, it will be injected into the two dies of the die casting machine between the solidus temperature and liquidus temperature. So, this is the temperature where it will be injected between the two dies. How is this temperature you see? This temperature, so this is the SSM form temperature. So, this is between the liquidus and solidus temperatures. Now, let us see the advantages of semi solid metal casting process. Complex parts are produced with near net shape, very complex parts can be produced. Near net shape means almost uh, no machining or negligible machining is required. Porosity free castings, it is a very good advantage. In the case of the castings, so because of the solidification above say we pour the what is a melt uh, at a temperature which is above the what is a melting temperature. 
then it cools down to the what is a melting temperature, then it cools down to the solid temperature, then to the room temperature. In this process there will be shrinkage. Finally, we may what is a pore, the molten metal may occupy all the corners and get the exact shape of the mould cavity, but finally there may be shrinkage defects. Sometimes it becomes very difficult to overcome these shrinkage defects, but here what is happening during solidification we are applying pressure. First of all we are not heating the melt above the liquidest temperature, the melt is heated between the liquidest temperature and the solidest temperature. So, the what is a temperature is not very high, it is in a slurry form then we are injecting into the two days. So, there will be minimum shrinkage, even if there is a shrinkage we are applying external pressure because of that the shrinkages will be totally eliminated. So, there would not be any shrinkage porosity, even if what about the gases, sometimes what say dissolved gases will be there, even if there is some dissolved gas inside the melt, then what happens? Because we are squeezing the melt, these dissolved gases will be escaping out. So, the casting will be free from shrinkage porosity and also from the gas porosity. Next one, we get the excellent mechanical properties to the cast components. Right. So, in the case of the casting mechanical properties may not be very good, but whereas in the case of the forging and other forming process mechanical properties are very good. Now, in the case of the semi solid metal casting we are taking the advantage of metal casting as well as that of the forging. So, we get the very good mechanical properties. Next one close dimensional tolerances means we get very good dimensional accuracies. Next one thin walls can be very successfully produced. And castings are heat treatable. So, these are the advantages of semi solid metal casting process. These are the disadvantages of semi solid metal casting. Production facilities need a high level of technology, right. So, the molten what is a slurry has to be heated above the liquidest temperature and below the solidus temperature. So, it requires a high level of technology and the staff who are working with this they should, they should have the what is a sound knowledge of what is a these temperatures. Operators require similar knowledge and training. Now, with this we are completing the semi solid manufacturing. Now, let us see another variant of what is a die casting. So, that is the vacuum die casting. Now, in the vacuum die casting the process is similar to die casting, right. But what is the difference? Here we can see this is the die die means a set of dies, two dies will be there and between these two dies again there will be a cavity whose shape is similar to the component which we want. Now, here we can see this is the furnace, this furnace is an integral part of the machine. Now, this is the what is a channel through which the molten metal enters and it fills into the cavity. But here during what is a while the metal is what is a carried to the set of the dies the way the molten metal is entering into the cavity makes the difference. In the case of the what is a hot chamber pressure die casting machine, we apply what is a external pressure on the plunger. As the plunger comes down, the molten metal enters into the cavity. And here what is happening? The molten metal enters into the cavity because of the vacuum that we apply. And here we are applying vacuum, there will be vacuum pump. Uh, you can see here. So, this is the vacuum uh, what is a line is coming here and it is applied to the what is a die casting uh, these dies. Now, as the vacuum is causing suction what will happen? The molten metal will be automatically entering into the mold cavity. We are now applying external pressure while the molten metal is entering into the cavity. Once the molten metal enters into the cavity then we apply the external pressure. Here we can see there is a plunger. So, this plunger will be moving. So, this is the suction of the molten metal from the metal bath due to the ap application of the vacuum. Then what will happen? Injection of molten metal into the die. Now, here there is a piston is there. This piston will be uh, what is a uh, moving forward and it causes pressure and the molten metal will be injected into the set of dies. Now, here vacuum always closed. Next what will happen? There will be solidification the component will be solidified, the casting will be solidified. Now, these are the advantages of vacuum die casting. High quality of molten metal, because we are applying vacuum, so no atmospheric contamination, no oxidation. So, that is how 
we get the high quality of molten metal. Next one, erosion of piston and diffusion of iron may not have takes place as in the case of the plunger type hot chamber die casting process. Now, in the case of the plunger type hot chamber die casting process, what is happening? We apply the what is a pressure on the what is a plunger, that plunger goes inside the what is a that is cylindrical barrel, as it comes down the molten metal will be injected inside the two dies. Now, in this process the what is a plunger is made up of certain hard materials. Now, may be like tungsten or molybdenum. So, these what is a hard elements like tungsten or molybdenum few atoms will be removed from the plunger and they will be diffusing into the molten metal. Now, what is the uh, what is the result? Because these are hard elements the cast component will have a uh, what is a properties the machinability will be very poor. So, that is the diffusion or erosion, diffusion or erosion would not take place as in the case of the plunger type hot chamber die casting process. Next one, in the, the, in the hot chamber what is a pressure die casting process, there is another type that is the air injection type. The air will be pressurizing the molten metal and the molten metal will be injected into the dies. Now, in this process as the air is coming down, as it is applying pressure on the molten metal, the oxygen present in the air will be reacting with the molten metal and causes oxidation. That would not happen in the case, case of the vacuum die casting. Oxidation of molten metal may not take place as in the case of the air injection type hot chamber die casting process. Next one, the casting is free from dissolved gases. These are the disadvantages of vacuum die casting. Cost of production goes up because we are applying the vacuum. So, this itself uh, makes the process costly. Next one, operation requires skilled workers means in the right time vacuum has to be applied, in the right time vacuum has to be stopped. So, this requires skill and knowledge that is how the operation requires skilled workers means the cost of production goes up because of the trained workers and skilled workers. Next one, so uh, these are the some of the what is the examples of the vacuum die cast parts. This is an automotive frame, these red colored what is a parts. So, these are the what is a parts produced from the vacuum die casting. So, this is the automotive frame. Now, let us see the factors influencing the quality of pressure die cast components. One is the injection velocity during the casting cycle. Next one, injection pressure. Next one, time of filling the mould cavity. Next one, temperature of cast alloy next one temperature of the chamber and finally, temperature of pressure die. Now, we will see die casting defects. What are the defects that are likely to arise in the die casting process? So, there are three categories of die casting defects. One category, first category is the surface defects, second category internal defects, third category dimensional defects. Under the surface defects, we have shouldering, blisters and cracks. Under the internal defects, we have inclusions, gas porosity and shrinkage porosity. Under the dimensional defects, there will be thermal expansion or contraction. So, first we will see the shouldering. Shouldering is the fusion of aluminum means the, the cast material with iron from the steel surface of the die ca cavity. The dies are made up of ferrous alloys. So, when we are casting what is a aluminum cast components in the die casting process, this molten metal can react with the iron of the steel dies. Generally, what will happen? An oxidized coating on the die cavity protects the cavity surface from the aluminum. There will be an oxidized coating will be there, but if the alloy impinges means it comes and strikes the alloy at a high pressure, then what will happen? A portion of the die core pin the aluminum will break down the oxidized interface between the die surface and the casting. Now, if the molten metal comes and impinges on the what say steel blocks, what will happen? So, because of that the oxidized coating will be broken, that time the cast metal the aluminum may react with the iron in the steel blocks or the iron in the dies, steel dies. So, when soldering occurs in the die casting die, the casting sticks to the cavity, then what will happen? Uh, consequently, the molten aluminum alloy 
we will be sticking to the what is it dies. So, this is the uh, typical appearance of shouldering defect you see here. So, this is the uh, background is the die and the molten aluminum is sticking to the die, die surface. Die is damaged and the casting is also damaged. Second one, second category, second defect is the blister. What is this blister? Blisters are bubble like bumps on the casting surface. Gases trapped near the casting surface cause them. When the casting is what is ejected and the casting surface over the blister is not strong enough to withstand the gas pressure, the surface yields and develops the blister. Let us see its appearance. Yes, this is the casting. Here we can see a, a kind of a defect like a bubble. So, this is the blister. You can see here, this is the blister. Next defect is the crack. It is a linear discontinuity of the surface of the die casting. It is a linear discontinuity. The two major causes for cracks are one is the insufficient temperature of die. If the casting die is comparatively cold as the casting freezes, there will be excessive internal stresses in the casting. So, this uh, leads to what is a crack. There is another reason excessive temperature of the die. If the die is too hot, usually in a local area at a particular what is a uh, point, crack forms due to shrinkage. So, these are the two reasons responsible for the formation of the linear discontinuities or the cracks. So, this is the typical appearance of a crack. Here we can see these are the cracks. Next one, let us see the second category that is the internal defects. Under that we have the inclusions. The vast majority of these inclusions is non-metallic aluminum oxide. Other inclusions are silicon carbide, flux, sludge and so on. And here we can see aluminum oxide inclusion. Next one, gas porosity under the internal defects. Gas porosity is due to trapped gases. Now, what are the sources of these gases? Trapped air in the furnace, air in the cold chamber or gases from excessive lubricants. We use lubricants. So, that time also from the lubricants, gases will be arised. Now, other ca causes for gas porosity, improper venting. There should, there will be vent holes to the dies. If these uh, what say vent holes are not enough to allow hot gases, that time also this gas porosity defect will arise. Now, this is the typical appearance of gas porosity. Here we can see these are all the gas porosities. Now, let us go to the third one under the internal defects that is the shrinkage porosity. Shrinkage defects occur at the last place in the uh, casting, right. Uh, during final stage of the solidification. Shrink porosity is characterized by a rough and jagged appearance in contrast to the smooth appearance of gas porosity. So, there will be two porosities, one is the shrinkage porosity and another one is the gas porosity. So, shrinkage porosity is characterized by a rough appearance. Insufficient pressure and uneven thicknesses of sections are common causes of shrinkage porosity. Now, let us go to the third category that is the dimensional defects. Thermal expansion or the contraction. A dimensional problem can occur when one half of the die is much hotter than the other half. There will be two dies that we know very well. If these two dies must be at the same temperature. If one half of the die or one die is hotter than the other half, this problem can occur. Flash buildup at the parting line may develop which prevents the die from closing properly. It ultimately leads to dimensional problems, expansion or contraction. Now, let us see the dies and die materials. Now, what are the materials used to what is a manufacture the dies? The dies should have enough what is a hardness, they should have enough hard strength, they should have enough fatigue strength. So, die should have very what is a good properties and it should have what is a ideal properties. Now, what are the materials used for making these dies? So, uh, what is the important materials are? So, these are known as the steels right H 11 steel, H 12 steel, H 13 steel, H 19 steel, H 20 steel and H 21 steel. So, this is the uh, what is a uh, these are the uh, what is a 
elements that are present in these steels. Carbon is present in all these steels. Besides carbon, chromium will be there, molybdenum will be there, tungsten will be there, vanadium, cobalt and nickel. In the case of the H11 steel, carbon content is 0.35, chromium content is 5 percent, molybdenum 1.5, no tungsten, vanadium 0.5 and balance is iron. And this steel is used for making zinc casting dies. Next one H12 steel, carbon content is 0 0.35, chromium 5 percent, molybdenum 1.5 percent, tungsten 1.5 percent, vanadium 0.4 percent and balance is iron. So, this is used for making aluminum casting dies, means uh, when we have to make aluminum castings. So, for that the dies are made up of this H12 steel. Next one H13 steel, carbon content 0 0.35, chromium 5 percent, molybdenum 1.5 percent, vanadium 1 percent and this steel is also used for making aluminum castings. Next one H19 steel, carbon content 0 0.4 percent, chromium 4.25 percent, tungsten 4.25 percent, vanadium 2 percent and cobalt 4.25 percent and this is used for making this uh, what say steel is uh, used uh, for making brass and bronze castings. Next one H20 steel carbon content 0 0.35, chromium 2 percent, tungsten 9 percent and this steel is also used for making the dies in the case of the bronze and brass castings. And finally, H21 steel carbon content 0 0.35, chromium 3.5, tungsten 9 percent. So, this is also used for making the dies where brass and bronze castings are to be made. So, in all these cases iron is the base element. Now, die casting types, dies types, what are the types of the dies? So, there are uh, four types of dies are there. One is the single cavity die produces one casting at a time. Second one is the multiple cavity die produces more than one casting at a time. Next one family die produces number of different parts, here also different parts are there, but same casting more than one casting, same casting, but here different castings. So, that is the family die. Next one unit die, a unit die allows use of replaceable cavities in the standardized main die frame for low at lower die costs. And here we can see this is the single cavity die, means so this is the shape of the what is a cast component, only one component can be produced at a time. So, that is the single cavity die. Now, this is the multiple cavity die and here we can see this is one casting, this is one casting, this is one casting, this is one casting, this is one casting and this is one and this is one. At a time in this die we can see there are six cavities are there, but all the cavities are similar. So, at a time with one injection we can produce six similar castings. So, this type of die is known as the multiple cavity die. And next one is the combination die. In the combination die we can see different parts can be produced. This is one part and this is one part and this is one part. Now, with one injection these different parts can be cast at a time. So, this is the combination die and this is the unit die. So, this unit die uh, what say includes a replaceable die at a lower cost that is the uh, unit die. Now, what is uh, let us see quickly how to make the or how to manufacture the die. When manufacturing a die casting die, the following are of vital importance, machinability, right? electrical discharge machining, heat treatment, dimensional stability, surface treatment and weldability. Now, costs involved in die making, you can see here this is like a like an iceberg, you see. Uh, only little cost is appearing outwards apparently, say this is the steel cost may be this much and this is the die making cost. So, only this much appears to be what say manufacturing or the what say die cost, but there are several hidden costs are there. Production and maintenance cost right, so if you preheating is there, no, we have to do the welding and scrap will be there that also costs us heat treatment, repair will be there last production adjustment will be there, delivery delays and etcetera and etcetera. All these elements contribute to the total cost of the die. So, these are the costs involved in the 
die making. Now, die maintenance before injecting the metal, make sure that the die has been preheated to preheated to 175 degrees centigrade. So, this is the first step in the die maintenance. When the die casting machine is running, run consistent cycle times with each cycle element consistent. Heat expansion contraction stress should be uniform. Next one, minimize build up on the cavity surfaces. This could be shoulder, carbon or waxes usually a result of inappropriate die release application. So, we have to minimize the build up on the die cavity surfaces. Next one is the die spray. Die spray can be applied through different methods. A manually held spray, next one individual spray nozzles mounted in fixed positions on the machine or the die. Next one a series of spray nozzles mounted on a moving arm that reciprocates in and out between the uh, open die faces called reciprocator. A series of spray nozzles mounted on a moving arm, you can see here spray is uh, it is uh, what is spraying is going on and these spray nozzles are mounted on a moving arm and here we can see this is one die and the spraying is going on and finally, these are the structural components of a die casting machine. What are the structural components of a die casting machine? We have learnt different types of what is a die casting machines and different types of the what is a variance in the die casting process and what are the finally, what are the structural components? One is the stationary platen, second one is the moving platen, third one is the rear platen, fourth one is the tie bars, next one is the toggle mechanism, next one electrical components and finally, hydraulic system components. So, with this we are completing the die casting process. So, friends in this lecture we have seen two advanced variants of the die casting process. One is the semi solid manufacturing that is the what say uh, the metal is heated above the liquidus temperature and below the solidus temperature then it is injected into the dies. Again we have seen different types of the semi solid manufacturing and the other variant is the vacuum die casting. So, with this we are completing the die casting process and in the next lecture we will be learning about the investment casting process. Thank you very much.